Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to the video tutorial for how to create a cutscene in Unreal Development Kit using that name. This is Grace Blessy. I'm a level design student at the Guildhall at SMU. And uh, today is February 7th, 2011. Alright, so when we left off, we had created our, static, our animated static mesh over here, our little soldier guy. You can kind of see him far away. We had set up cinematic mode to toggle on the appropriate time. We set up director groups and our main camera. And we have it all ready now to actually start animating this cinematic. So, to get started, go back into your matinee window if it's not already up, and look for your main cam group that we set up in the previous video. And the easiest way to do this again is to just look through the eyes of the camera. And to do that, you want to click this little camera icon so that it turns yellow. And now you can see we've got the point of view of that camera that was sticking out of the door. Now bring your timeline back down to the beginning of your sequence. Let's get it situated in the viewport here. Bring it back down to zero. And our workflow for animating this camera is going to be to drop keyframes first and then adjust where we want the camera for that keyframe. And you see you have two keyframes. You have, I mean, or two tracks in, for, uh, into which you'll be adding keyframes. You have the movement and FOV angle, which is essentially the zoom. So I usually start with the movement. We've already got one. So this is our initial state. And we want our initial angle state to also be just right here. So at zero, zero, press enter to drop the key. And I'm not going to change the value because this is good as how I like it. Now, I know I want to turn right and focus in on that uh, hula hooping skeletal mesh in about one second when he starts his animation. So bring the timeline forward to about one second. And of course, you'll see as I'm doing this, I'm not going to waste a lot of time forcing you to watch me tweak tiny fine details and make it look perfect. I just want to show you the tools and the skills, you know, the information you need to then go and do that sort of thing yourself. I'm just going to get a very rough cutscene going here that basically gets things that we want to look at in the screen but maybe is not exactly perfect yet. So we're just going to look in that general direction at one second but before we actually turn the camera you want to make sure you've got your movement track selected, hit enter for your key and now we can use the right mouse button to turn the camera and move and look in that direction. Now we need to zoom in because that guy's very far away. So go down to your angle track, hit enter, drop the keyframe, then right click, set value. And when you want to zoom in, you want a lower value. So I know uh, from spreading through this a couple of times, I need to go maybe about eight to get close enough to see this guy. All right, now you can see that we zoomed in well, but we are angled in quite the right direction to see him. So if we want to adjust that, just go back up here and left click on our movement keyframe for this stage and then while it's selected move it to the spot we want. And there he is floating above the ground. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's standing there. And now we want to hold here for a few seconds while he does his hula hoop, which is starting right about here. You can see with this blue bar that makes it a lot easier than just having to guess. Um, now we move according to our workflow, we move the timeline first. And here we can watch and just see when he's done. So you're about maybe a little bit before he's done. We'll start to pan the camera away. But if we want to maintain that time, that position during that in-between time, we'll just hit movement again, keep the same spot, hit the angle again, keep, don't change anything. Now that kind of holds the camera there for that time. Now I want to look up the spaceship that I know is flying by up here just from, because I know how the animation goes. Uh, so, of course, you want to already have a plan. It's, uh, this will be so much easier if you already really know your animation, kind of know where everything is and where it's going before you try to get in here and actually animate the cutscenes. Uh, things will be a lot, go up smoother and quicker for you. So I happen to know that the uh, ship should be coming by right here around between four and five seconds. And of course we can adjust this if I'm estimating a little incorrectly. So now I'm going to drop my movement key and I'm going to look up and see if we can find them coming. There he is. So there's our ship. And I'm going to back out a little bit here. Drop another key. Set the value to, let's say, 15. That works. Okay. 
And so now it's going to keep flying towards us. So I'm going to follow it by just moving the timeline forward and dropping a few keyframes periodically and uh, moving them to where the ship is, zooming out as needed. Just the bare minimum we need to kind of keep following this ship for the purposes of this example. And see there, I backed out the angle to about 25. See where it goes now, it starts to idle there and turn. Let's get it to idling and move it so like right here. Angle, set value, 35. Now it sits there, it turns. Now we're going to start to turn just a little bit further to enter. And pretty soon here I'm going to show you how to set up another camera perspective because the ship's about to, about to fly around to on the other side of the building. I want to readjust that movement key a little bit right there. There we go. Okay, this should be about the last one for this page. One more keyframe for the movement. Yeah, our ship's way, he's already gone, so that's actually too fast, too far. Hmm. Move it right there. There we go, that's better. Move a little bit further over. Yeah. And we got our angle. Alright, so now we want a second camera. So let's go back up and add our uh, first let's X out of matinee. Um, I'm going to go over here to where I want my second camera to be, more or less. And I'm not going to do anything special with camera, the second one, just in the interest of time. Uh, I'm just going to have it sit here and watch the spaceship around. This is more for showing you how to switch cameras than anything. So add the second camera just like you did the first one. Go to Content Browser, After Classes, click on the camera actor. You can drag it into the world. It might come in really far away. In fact, I can't even see where it went. Uh, but we can pull it to us by hitting the lock selected accuracy camera. Hopefully that will bring the camera to us successfully. It seems to be acting kind of slow with this. Let's see if it's working. Come out of there. Yes, brought the camera to us. Great. Beautiful. Alright, so now we have our second camera. We'll give it a group just like we gave it, gave the first one a group here in matinee. So while it's selected in the viewport, right click, add new camera group, and this will be our second cam. Now we need to tell the matinee sequence to switch to that camera when our ship is going around. So we know the ship is going around about here, which is where our last movement keys were for our first camera, so let's have director group highlighted, hit enter, and now all we have to do is switch to the second cam by selecting it in the drop-down menu and hitting OK. Now you see the bar here has changed color. And so for the duration of this time, we're going to be in the second camp. Now we don't want to stay here forever, just until it gets around the other side of the building. So let's pull. Now, like I said, I'm not going to really mess with the angles or anything in the interest of time. But right here, we want to switch maybe a little sooner. We want to switch back, switch back to our main cam. So all we got to do is drop another keyframe, select main cam, main cam, and click OK. Now there's one more little hiccup, and that's that the main cam isn't facing the right spot when we come back to it. We want it to be facing to the left now to meet that ship. So we got to go down to our main cam and our movement, drop the keyframe, and move it where it's supposed to be. And now it'll be doing this movement while we're actually in the view of the second camp, so we won't have to see all this. We'll just be waiting and ready for it when we get back over here. Back out a little bit on the angle. Uh, let's do a little more. Right click, the value, 60, excuse me, 65. All right, and so now that should be everything. Let's just go ahead and do a test run through and see how it how things are working. Come out. Uh, we trigger our matinee. There's our dancing guy. We got our ship. We're following the ship. Everything's working. Flies around. We switch our views. 
kind of flies out of our view a little bit, but that's okay. Now we're coming back around. Oh, now we have control again, and we're running out of the way to avoid those rockets. So that's great. Only one more problem. We need to get the skeletal mesh actor out of here, because he can't actually attack us or do, any, do anything. You'll need an actual bot spawn for that. But we, of course, don't want him just standing there like a statue. So we're going to really quickly go into Kismet, do a, uh, make an event matinee for destroying him, go back to the guard group, right click, uh, new event track, and then right where we want him to disappear, which is basically any time before the cinematic ends. Put it right here. Got the keyframe. Call it destroy guard. Now we've got destroy guard. That should appear in our kismet. There it is. And now we're going to right click in kismet. New action. Actor. Destroy. Uh, we can bring it closer. Here we go. And now we just want to take that destroy guard event and plug it into the end of the destroy. The last thing it needs is a target. Our target is down here. See our iron guard? We have skeletal mesh actor zero. Drag the target to him, and that should kill him. Let's just test it all out one more time. Make sure he disappears after everything's over. All right, it's there. Ship comes in, making lots of good noises and smoke, pretty sun rays. It's a nice angle right there. That's something you would really want to work on if you had more time on this. And then uh, here it comes again. Oh, it's firing at us. Run out of the way. Or we can let it hit us, maybe. I don't know. Look at that. Took out like 10% of my health. And he's gone. Success. So there you have it. That's all you need to know. Those are the basics for creating a wide variety of exciting cutscenes using pretty much any kind of subject matter that you have or could create. Um, of course, there's more more advanced things one could learn if one, is, one wanted to uh, peruse the internet. Uh, for now, I hope that this has been instructive and helped you get started creating some of your first cinematics in UDK. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.